MMA True Believers. This is Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and tonight's recording just got bigger. That's because I am joined by a heavyweight competing against MMA veteran and judo Olympic gold medalist Satoshi Ishii at the Ocean Resort Casino in Atlantic City in New Jersey at PFL 6. That man is UFC and PFL vet, The Big Show, Jared Rolshaw. Jared, thanks for taking some time out to talk to me tonight. No problem. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. You know, you're back is against the wall as you enter your final fight in season two, you know, and that's after a really solid showing in season one where you got to avenge your loss against Kelvin Tiller, got to the semifinals and just came up short against a guy who ended up winning it all in Philip Felipe Lins in the semis. And, and you lost your, your season two opener to Dennis Golstov going into the, the Golstov fight. Did you view him as a really dangerous opponent based off of what he's done so far in his career? And, and even were you able to, to, watch a little video if you do video uh, preparation on him can, since most of his career has been over in Russia? Yeah, I, I, I don't watch a ton of video on everybody. And, and uh, you know, Golsov was one of those guys that even earlier in my MMA career I kind of heard of mm. and, uh, you know, heard of his how, how good he was. And he was an up-and-comer, I think, around the same time that I was. So, uh you know, I'd heard of him, watched a little bit of his fights and stuff prior, and um, that was, you know, he's Sambo national champion multiple times. He's really good at striking, and and uh, so, but I told everybody beforehand, uh, you know, uh, the interview people and everything, I said, you know, this is, I'm getting toward the end of my career as a fighter probably, and I'm going to go out there and mix it up, you know. I went out there and stood with them and, and tried to, land some shots on him and kind of stepped away from what I normally do, which is grind on mm. people. Mm. Uh, you know, I had, I hate to say I had fun and when I lost, but I was enjoying myself. While <laughs> I and, uh, you know, things are going good until they weren't. And that's just what happens when you're in heavyweight division and, and you try and play somebody else's game. Uh, you know, you're going to take that chance. And, and I did, and, you know, he capitalized on it and Hey, he's solid. I don't, I'm not sitting here saying uh, I lost to a slouch. He's really good. Mm -hmm. I knew when they matched me up with him, I said, this is probably the toughest guy in the division outside. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of myself, you know, and I'm thinking he's probably my toughest opponent in this whole division. Did you, was there a reason why you, you wanted to, to, to stand with him a little bit? Was it because, you know, his, his Sambo, you figured it'd be difficult to get him down? Was it because of, like, the PFL format where you're going for points and, and you were you looking to try to get some big points and solidify the playoff spot early on? Was there a specific reason you felt like, you know, I, I want to go out there and trade with this guy? It was kind of weird. Like, when I got there and stuff, I just kind of thought, man, I don't feel like going out there and grinding on this guy. I, I, my striking and stuff, it felt good. We've been working on a lot of stuff. I thought I could catch him with uh, on his way out. And uh, just one of those things that you don't see. Mm. Uh, he planted his feet when I went after him. I was waiting for I thought he was going to circle out wide, which is why I was throwing that wide overhand right. And when he didn't move out, he had actually planted and threw that shot inside of my wide right hand. And he just, just a well-placed shot and uh, just flashed me. So, no, I mean... I just felt like going out there and changing it up. And mm. with the format and stuff, it is. It's risk and reward and stuff. Right. But, you know, if you don't win, you don't get bonus points either. So, you know, most importantly is, is to win. And I'll take uh, I'll take ugly wins over pretty losses any day. I don't believe in pretty losses. But, uh, <laughs> you know, for me, it's always been about winning. But that weekend, it was just let's see what we can do. Let's go cool. have some, some fun. Going back to that, I mean, like I was watching the fight again earlier. Um, I mean, you didn't look like you were completely out of it when you went to the floor and, you know, he knocked you down and he had those final shots. Were you kind of still there and maybe was the, was the stop at all kind of too soon or were you, you know, really damaged and, it, and you know, it was just avoiding you taking any more pain? No, it was it was pretty good. Uh, it, it kind of it was, wasn't a clean, you know, clean full knockout or anything. It was just a, mm -hmm. like a flash and went down and then uh, – you know, as I looked up, I got hit again, and then I it kind of dazed me again. Then I got hit again, and got dazed. It was good stoppage and stuff, and you know, probably probably for the better to not take extra damage with these fights being so close together that right. you, know, you got to take the the good from the bad, and and uh, you know, be glad that I didn't get take extra damage I didn't need to take. 
you know, was the short gap between these fights. Was the the loss difficult to to, to kind of get past? I mean, because because it happened, you know, it was a first round finish, and I'm sure going into this, you just mentioned, you know, you figured yourself as one of the favorites going into this, along with him as as a top guy in the division, especially with Felipe Lins out of it. Was was getting past this after winning your first fight, especially last season? What's a difficult one? Oh, uh, you asking if if it's tough to get past it? Yeah, yeah. Now. I don't think so. I mean, like I said, I, I stepped out of my comfort zone and decided to go out there and kind of play his game. And I always know what the risk is when you're standing with heavyweights. I mean, I've knocked guys out. I've been knocked out. Most of my losses have been knocked out. So I know what the risk is. And mm-hmm. and I went out there and, and decided to put it on the line. And, and that's what happens when you gamble. You win some, you lose some. And, and, uh, and, and lost that one with him. But it's easy – it's so much different when you're doing this season type thing because you just got to get rid of it. You got to yeah. forget about it and move on right away because if you're dragging that around, you're going to drag down your workouts. You're going to drag down your you know, your whole demeanor and everything and, and mentally. So I'm just kind of forget about it, you know. Mm-hmm. It was actually kind of easy to forget about. Is that the beneficial thing of the PFL format? That because it comes around so quickly like that, it, it's you don't have you don't have the opportunity to linger on things. Yeah, I think it's such a great format. I mean, I know it's not for everybody and it's not for every organization because some places have so many fighters, it's yeah. impossible to do them. But, uh, you know, you see other other organizations starting to have these little mini tournaments and stuff within mm-hmm. their weight classes, <clears throat> which is really cool and a credit to PFL for doing it. Uh, it's obviously taking hold to some people. And uh, I think it's great. Yeah, you, you can lose and then turn around and say, all right, well, half the roster lost too in your weight mm-hmm. class can only be one winner yep and you know so there's a lot of guys going in there in the same situation you are and it's like mm-hmm. you better get yourself back up get back to work and get ready to try and make make it into the postseason here mm. this ishii fight it's an interesting one because you know people know you for your strong grappling and, and opponents know you, you, you're going to grapple with them and it's going to be difficult to handle you yet in ishii you will face a, a gold medal grappler after you know just mentioning you face a, a high level sambo guy this fight, you know, it almost seems even more so made for what you would you wanted to do in the first fight. You just wanted to trade because Ishii's stand up, while it has improved over the years, is not his strong point. Is this something? Is this more of a fight that you feel like you know? What, I kind of want what this maybe makes even if a better fit to, to 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 trade with him, or is it what happened in the last fight has made you say, okay, don't get away from what I know, what I do good, and let me go to what I do good, and, and it's grappling. Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, <laughs> Ishii, it's like, you know, do, do you want to tie up with this guy? Probably not. I yeah. mean, if I get <laughs> if I get up high with him and and get locked up, you know, I'm probably going for a ride. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've, uh, I'm aware of that. You know, that he's a Olympic gold medalist uh, at judo at throwing people. So if I get up high with him, chances are he's probably going to win those. You know, so it's taking a little bit of thought process and stuff and game planning, but. You know, uh, I'm definitely going to be using my wrestling more this one. Mm. But he's certainly a more hittable guy than than uh, Golsov. You know, one of the things about Golsov, he's long and rangy. Mm-hmm. He's got a really, really fast jab. And uh, he gets he gets out real fast. You know, Ishii's a, a different guy. He's, he's kind of stays in there a little bit more. He's shorter, so he needs to stay in tighter. Mm-hmm. And that's always been kind of an issue with me is I'm not – overly long and tall so i've also had to stay inside so i think it's a very interesting matchup i i was hoping that i was going to get ishii after after the fights were over last time not because i thought he would be a winnable fight but because i thought this is olympia i mean it's an honor to mm-hmm. fight somebody like him now and like you mentioned let's say you know things don't go right for a moment in that in the fight and he is you know able to get you down and use that olympic level judo how do you feel in, in the position of if, if you're on your back against him because it's not you on your back is not something we really see very often when it comes to grappling so uh, you know do you have the, the the tricks that maybe we're just not familiar with seeing you are you prepared to showcase that that jujitsu and that grappling off your back that maybe a lot of us don't really realize you have yeah, I'm pretty prepared for it. I mean, because a lot of college wrestling and everything, you actually have to start on bottom or, mm. you know, you choose to go down because that's a good chance that you're going to get out to get an extra point. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of top and bottom stuff. Am I laying on, on my back in wrestling? I, I hope not. If I am, I'm, I'm in a bad spot. So, <laughs> uh, no, I, 
I'm prepared for that. Most of the time in my gyms and stuff that I, I've gone to over the years and Team Takedown and War Room where I'm at now, um, usually with the guys that I have, I'm starting in bad positions on the bottom. Mm. Now, am I starting underneath a Olympic gold medalist? No, but I have guys rotating in on me. I know how to get up off the bottom. Uh, is this a different challenge? For sure. There, there's always different challenges, but uh, I'm prepared to get off the bottom if I end up there. I plan on it being a grueling match as usual. I mean, it's going to be a tough. Mm. He's a tough fighter. He'll yeah. he'll fight hard 15 minutes, yep. and, and uh, those kind of guys are scary because uh, you know you can wear guys down, and and they're not half the fighter they are that first round. But when a guy's real gritty like him, it's, it makes it a tough fight. Mm -hmm. Now. Kind of a double question, but the first part of it is, do you view him because of his Olympic level credentials? You know, you are a well, well respected grappler. Is he on a? Is he maybe the best pure grappler you have ever faced yet? Uh, well, <clears throat> I'd say from the waist up fighting, yeah, he uh, mm -hmm. grappling he probably is. Uh, on the ground, and I don't know. I don't know who I – well, I take that back that Olenek, you know, he's really good on the ground. But I fought him in the UFC. Um, but in my fight, I never made it to the ground with him, so I wasn't able to test myself against him. Mm. But I've trained with high-level guys, uh, grapplers and stuff. But, yeah, he's probably one of the higher – if not if not the highest, uh, you know, his credentials and stuff for grappling. And this is kind of the second part of it. I'm glad you brought up Alexi, and you know you also fought Roy Nelson too, because you've faced a couple of really good MMA grapplers, even though you didn't do too much as much as you you know can do it with the Alexi to explain his question. But yeah, while he may be one of the best pure grapplers, do you feel his MMA grappling is on the level of his pure Olympic kind of judo grappling? Do you feel he's made that transition well, or he's a good grappler MMA, but maybe he's not as scary as his credentials may say? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with the. The, the latter one on that i think uh you know he's he's obviously like i said he's a olympic gold medalist at judo judo that's the pinnacle of the sport he was the best at one point at his weight class and at that sport so yeah he's no joke when it comes to judo grappling uh as far as mma grappling i watch films of his i've seen some of his stuff and i've he's not near as scary to me at least mm -hmm. uh when i watch his videos of him grappling on the ground and fighting so I've seen him get taken down. I've seen him, I've seen him get up and stuff too. Like I said, he fights hard and, and he's a fighter. He'll get up. Uh, but no, I, I, I would not be as worried about grappling with him on the ground and stuff as I would if me and him were in a judo match. I'm sure I'd give my butt kick. <laughs> when we, when you have seen him and, and the stuff you've watched him, has there been moments where like there, right there, right there, those are areas I know I can take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I won't pinpoint anything, but of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But now I, I was watching just uh, I was watching one of his fights over again last night. And I'm like, these are things that I'm like, this is all me all day. You know, mm -hmm. this is something this guy's done to him. I can for sure do that to him. This is where he's gotten taken down. This is where he's been on the bottom. What's he do? How do I do in those positions? I do great in a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's on top, what, what are his threats there? You know, am I good at getting out of these things? You know, it's his uh, his stuff's not anything real flashy or tricky on the ground. It's it's just yeah. good, solid, uh, stay in great position, and that's I'm used to that because that's how I like to be. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a flashy jump for an arm bar, swing mm -hmm. all over the place on somebody. I I like dominant position. I want to I want somebody to know, hey, this guy's winning. You know, there's no question about it. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's winning. I, I talked to Steven Styler a couple of weeks ago before his last fight, and he, you know, he mentioned because he lost his first fight, if 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 you don't make the playoffs, he feels that there's maybe some precedent in that the the PFL may not bring a person back to the to the next season, and he felt that pressure because of that that thinking, and it concerned him. Do do you feel an, a new kind of pressure because you know you're behind the eight ball a little bit, and that you didn't get the win in your first fight? You have to, you know, it's not a guarantee, but winning definitely secures your chance at the playoffs. And then also, I mean, is there a pressure because, like many other fighters I've talked to from the PFL over the last two seasons, this situ this this. Sh league has been very beneficial for them financially you know more so than guys that have been in the ufc so are you feeling a, a pressure that not only did you get in playoffs this year but you know not to hurt your chances because you want to come back for season three 
Uh, I guess that's always a part of it, you know, but for me, I'm, I've also got another a career outside of fighting that I've started. So it's, it's not near the, uh, pressure that it used to be. You know, when I was, when I was in the UFC, it was always about when, when, when you had to win, no matter what mm. ugly wins, it didn't matter. Just go out there and win. Cause this was your job. This is your well being. This is how you feed your family and stuff. And now it's a little bit less pressure. As far as that goes, having insurance, having retirement, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it sure there's a, there's added pressure, you know, uh, the thought of maybe not making it to the playoffs. You lose a lot of money. I mean, I lost a um, you know a guy last year in the semifinals that won it. I feel like I won that first round. Yeah. Lost in the second, got TKO'd. And then he went on to beat a guy that I TKO'd in my UFC yep. career. Yep. And you're that close to a million dollars, you know. I mean, that hurts. You mm-hmm. lose a you lose a huge chunk of money just by not making the finals. Mm-hmm. And then you lose a whopping amount of money, you know, by not winning it. So, yeah, that that's it's uh, definitely hurts when you think about it. But it's a... Uh, so there's yeah there's some pressure i don't know if i answered your question no no you did you did you did but i mean you also brought up an interesting thing i didn't know about so what is the career outside of of mma fighting that gives you a little bit more security and it doesn't make it a full you know really bad pressure like you're all or nothing on this uh i work i'm a an apprenticeship this is my second year Mm -hmm. as a uh elevator constructor we build elevators yep install them stuff we're doing the elevators in the new texas ranger stadium right now nice. it's a, it's, yeah it's a cool job it's <clears throat> kind of a lot of heights and stuff it's, it's a dangerous <laughs> job but dangerous how'd you get job into that me. uh just i had a father-in-law that works in the office and he, he <laughs> oh. just mentioned it years ago yeah. actually he mentioned it to me 10 years ago when i got out of college he said you ought to look into this stuff it's a really great career hmm. and uh you like to build stuff and i was like no, I think I'm going to go on and try this fight and stuff. So I just said no and walked out, you know, walked away. And uh, now I'm like, well, maybe that wouldn't have been a bad idea. But I, I, I don't have any regrets, though. Yeah. Did you get a I told you so from him? <laughs> no. No. no I've, I've gotten to do so many cool things because of taking this path, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, I, I meet people who are in this profession that I'm in, and, and that's their life, you know. My yeah. life has been about competing, and, and I love to compete and and to go see the world and stuff and compete against guys from different countries and meet other fans. I mean, I've been to New Zealand, to Australia, to Abu Dhabi, to Holland, you know. I mean, these are places I never would have went to mm-hmm. if I would have just went into, you know, construction or something. Yeah, uh, It's incredible what it's done for me. Now, your nickname is The Big Show, which as a longtime wrestling fan stands out to me. Uh, uh, did you always have that name, or is it a nod to the, the longtime WWE wrestler? How, how did it come about being called The Big Show? No, I had I had a lot of nicknames. Thrown. <laughs> I had an older brother that was a real jackass. So, uh, I had a lot, of, a lot of nicknames, and none of them were good. So, uh, that was What's some of the, the other ones? ones? What's some of the really <laughs> bad nicknames? Oh geez, I was a chunky, sick, junky kid, so it was like uh, chunk and fatty, <laughs> or that kind, of, you know, stuff like that. It's yeah. like just terrible ones. Yeah, uh-huh. but, uh huh. But no, uh, Big Show was one of the ones that he used to call me and stuff as we got older, and he kind of gave me a little respect for a change. And, <laughs> and uh, whenever they said, whenever they said, "Oh, you need a nickname, <clears throat> a ring name," yeah. I said, I don't know what to, what to do. I've never had anybody call me anything, you know, JR or something like that, my mm-hmm. friends. And uh, my brother goes, it's a big show. And I was like, I guess that's probably the only thing that I've been called by him that's good. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess that'll work. Oh, yeah. so that's the only reason why I went with it. It just kind of stuck, and I liked it, and it seemed like it was a, an all right fit. And then uh, it really had nothing to do with the wrestling. And then funny thing was, like, five years into my career, we had somebody get, get a hold of my management mm. about using the name The Big Show. Mm. But we had, uh, and <clears throat> so that, I had to show proof that I had, had that nickname from, like, years ago. I had yeah. a shirt in college that was made with the nickname, and uh, I don't know. Nothing ever ended up happening with it, though, so that was good. <laughs> now, aside from fighting... We know you're you're building elevator, working on the apprenticeship apprenticeship to build elevators. You know what are some of the things 
what other passions do you have that don't have anything to do with fighting or anything to do with elevators? Like, wh- are you maybe a, a big movie fan? Do you like, you know, unique music? Are you an, a Broadway or opera show lover? Are you a stamp collector? <laughs> you know, what's some something interesting that they some fans of yours, your fans will go, what? The big show likes, he's into that? I, I, I never thought that was going to happen. Uh, probably I'd be like, well, I love to hunt and fish. And most people would be like, all right, I can see that. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, between doing this, this construction job, the apprenticeship, and I have to go to school for that as well. Mm-hmm. And then having a family on top of that and fighting, it's a, uh, man, my plate is just full yeah. and crazy. And, <clears throat> you know, I was thinking about it today. I was like, man, this is a crazy schedule to have. <laughs> work at, starts at 6 in the morning. I'll be up at 4. Mm-hmm. Got to be at work at 6. Wow. Work till 4.30. You know, and it's Texas heat. We're working outside. You wow. go from from work to the gym where they don't use AC. Oh. So then you work out in there for a couple hours and you get home and it's, you know, 8.30 and you're trying to eat something before you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And then you don't want to eat too close to going to bed because it's not good for you, but yeah, yeah. you got to eat something, you yeah. know? So, and then you end up missing time with your family, your kids and stuff. Some of them are already in bed, you know, it's, it's a different lifestyle for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm getting toward the end of my career though. Uh, fighting. I notice some knees are starting to hurt a little more, mm-hmm. not recovering like I used to. And, you know, I've had a lot of miles on me before fighting from college wrestling that, those things are catching up with me. Is there a clear, you know, define, okay, I want to be out of this in two years, or I want to try PFL season three, and then we'll see what happens. Is there kind of an, a set idea of, you know, the exit strategy from MMA? Uh, you know, I told Ray Sefo before this, uh, this season started, and, and I'm a huge fan of Ray Sefo, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I was with Carlos Silva, too, before he left for the World Tennis Yeah, team he's awesome. And, he's awesome. He is, he is awesome. Mm-hmm. He's a pleasure to work with. The, the whole PFL organization is a pleasure to work with. Um, but I told him, I said, look, I said, I'm at the end of my career. This is probably my last season, maybe. Oh, wow. And uh, he said, all right, well, you know, let's go out there and, you know, give it all you got and stuff. And he was supportive of it. He didn't say, you know, you have to come back or we don't want you or anything like that. He just said, yeah, you know, finish this career or finish this season up and, and, uh, you know, if you want to call it a career, call it a career. Uh, I might do that. There's a, there's a chance of it. See how it goes. And then, uh, but if not, I might take one or two more fights later on. I'm just going to see what's on the table, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm, I'm not against some overseas type of stuff, too. You know, that seems to be a pretty good avenue to go these days. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's amazing some of the opportunities are finally opening up, opening up with, with MMA. It's, yeah. it's incredible. It's, it's awesome for the fighters to have options you know where at one point it just seemed like there was only one one or two options that and they weren't always great options Mm -hmm. anyway yep you know now there's some other options that could make it a lucrative career you just wish they showed up about five years ago (laughs) but then we (laughs) wouldn't have the gyro roll show apprenticeship and and future elevator building which is still a very important thing that's right (laughs) yeah (laughs)